Welcome into another edition of our Locked On NFL Insider Report. I'm Kainani Stevens, your host for today, joined by our Locked On Vikings insider, Luke Braun. Thank you for joining us today. Big news in Minnesota, of course, as not only head coach, but GM are both headed out of town. A little bit surprising on one end, probably not on the other. Um, Luke, what was your immediate reaction when you heard the news? Yeah, so we've seen this coming for a long time. So I've kind of already made my peace with it. Uh, (laughs) The Vikings get rid of Mike Zimmer. Um, that has been in the works for a while. Uh, the dynamic for most of the back half of the season has been make the playoffs, save your job. Vikings to make the playoffs, they don't save the job. So that wasn't particularly surprising. It was a little less clear what was going to happen to Rick Spielman. It was clear he w- wasn't going to be the GM anymore, but mm-hmm. they might have tried to find him a different role in the organization, something more on the business side. And it turns out that th- they didn't really come to an agreement there. So... Either way, um, it's kind of the full on the nuke button. GM out, coach out. We're doing a whole new tandem here. When you look at something like this where they kind of clean house, um, but they're not necessarily cleaning house with the team, what's maybe top of your list in terms of priorities of what kind of coach, what kind of atmosphere vibe would be good for this team to keep it moving forward? Yeah, and when it comes to the roster and the assistants and all that, they haven't made any decisions there because they're going to let the new guy come in and make those decisions. So they're not committed to keeping anybody, I don't think. It's whatever the new guy wants, he's that he's going to be able to do that. Um, for me, it's uh, there's a lot about leadership, and the Wills talked a lot about, you know, we need a good leader and a good collaborator and a good communicator. For me, I want somebody who knows how to build something. Um, you know, somebody, I, I don't want the latest whiteboard whiz kid. Don't give me the best scheme guy and then make that guy do everything but scheme. I want somebody who knows how to build an organization for both coach and GM, somebody who can build a culture, somebody who has a, a clear vision for the kind of team they want to be, and then can go out and execute that. Even if it takes a year or two, go out and execute it. I look at like what the bills did. And I think what the bills did is really, really smart. They had Josh Allen. They were in love with the guy. They built a team around the guy. They built a defense the way, the way that they wanted it. They they had a very focused approach and look, they just won the division for the second year in a row in the division with Bill Belichick in it. That's the model that I would like for the Vikings to uh, to go follow. But this is a crossroads we've never been in before as Vikings mm-hmm. fans, uh, or at least not in a long, long time. New coach, new GM, new everything. Not since 2006. I think, as you mentioned, we were talking a little bit earlier that the organization has said they're going to try to get a GM in place and then get a coach in place, which is... Mm-hmm. Uh, from my layman's point of view, the best way to do it, obviously, so you're on the same page. But there's a lot of open jobs. So what is most appealing about this Vikings team if you're coming in as a GM or head coach about what they have right now? Yeah, as a GM, the big thing is the Wilfs will stay out of your way. The Wilfs, and they'll talk about it all the time. They're like, we know what we don't know. We are not They are not football guys. They're like Giants fans from New York. So <laughs> they do not have, and they're not going to Jerry Jones this and, and, and start messing around in the war room, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that is, I think, really attractive to potential GMs. The ownership is going to give you what you need and then stay the hell out of your way. And then as a coach, I think it's the same thing. Um, but you know, they've got pieces on their roster. You have a Daniil Hunter if you want, or there's an out in that contract. If you, if you don't want to pick up his roster bonus, there's a reasonable out. If you don't like the injury with Kirk cousins, there's options here. If you like Kirk cousins, this is a fantastic opportunity. You can just go pick up a quarterback that you like. Even if you don't like Kirk cousins, that's fully guaranteed salary, but it's a very tradable contract. It's a very remarkable contract. There's lots of options there. And then guys like Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, they have two bookend tackles that I think everybody was pretty happy with, um, mm-hmm. offensive tackles. There are pieces to build around. And so if there, and a lot of those pieces are kind of scheme agnostic. There's no scheme that Justin Jefferson doesn't fit. Nobody doesn't need a deep threat that can kill you on a deep post, right? That... Um, I think can be really attractive to a head coach. I think there are some other uh, places. I mean, look, Jacksonville has a quarterback. Chicago has a quarterback. If you like those guys, you're there. If you don't like those guys, though, if you don't like Justin Fields, you can't take the Chicago job. You're stuck to that guy. So you have to like Justin Fields. You don't necessarily have to like Kirk Cousins. If you want out from under him, you can always go into the trade market. Is this something I know you mentioned you don't really want that, you know, hot name, offensive kind of guy coming in for your team necessarily. But is this something where a more veteran coach, someone that's already had a head coaching job can really come in and thrive given the pieces that they have? So I like that because I just like the idea of let's hire a guy who's not doing this for the first time. 
We all yeah. get better. Everything you've ever done, you're better at it the second time than the first time. Right. Um, and so I'm more open to the idea of a retread for that. But that's more my own personal opinion. I think with the Vikings themselves, they're not going to leave any stone unturned. Right. Um, but I'm I'm open to a guy like a Todd Bowles is somebody that I've been really interested in because he can build something. He can get more than the sum of his parts. Um, especially on, on the defensive side. Look at what he did with those Jets teams. Didn't work out. Those Jets teams were a disaster from the roster, but he had them fighting. He had them competitive, and he had them playing their asses off for him. I respect that. Um, that's the kind of thing, you know, I, I don't mind like a Doug Peterson retread. I could definitely be talked into something like that. <laughs> but look, if you wanted to bring Brian Dable in, who also I think has a reputation for being adaptable and building things around people, again, the Bills, like a big fan, um, <laughs> that... Like, I could totally be open to that as well. Um, I'm, like, not as into Kellen Moore. That's really who I'm subtweeting here. <laughs> He's a it's scheme like, wizard, but has he ever <laughs> been a leader? Has he ever, you know, like, really built something? Like, no, he's a whiteboard guy. Let him draw things up on the whiteboard, call the plays. That's where he belongs. Why am I giving him a job that requires a totally different skill set? Stay in your lane. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, well, we'll see exactly what the options are going to be, obviously. Do, is there a feeling, I mean, I know the GM position, maybe it was a little bit more of a surprise or they were maybe moving towards that way anyway, I think you mentioned, but how quickly do you think they're going to try to move on this? Not, they're going to be very deliberate. Okay. I would not be shocked if the Vikings are the last team to hire their guy. Um, they don't want to run, don't need, like if, if everybody... He's going to scramble and rush to hire Eric B enemy and the Vikings miss out. They're at peace with that. They do not want to rush this because if you mess up your GM hire, you mess up your head coach hire. You just threw like three years down the toilet and the rest of Justin Jefferson's rookie contract. They're going to take their time with this thing. Um, and I think the fastest decision probably is not going to be as good as the right decision. So mm -hmm. I think I agree with them on that, but they're going to be very deliberate on this for a timeline. They're going to want to GM quickly just because there's a lot of work to do and we're already falling behind here. Um, so I would imagine a GM comes pretty quickly, but I would probably imagine that a head coach hiring like could come like after the Super Bowl. You got to wait for these guys to lose right until yeah. before you can yeah. actually hire them. So, <laughs> yeah, that that could happen, too. So it could be a little frustrating of a wait for Vikings fans, but I think it'll probably pay off in the long run. So some good insight, Luke. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked On NFL Insider. I'm Kainani. He's Luke. Thanks for watching.